One of the biggest time wasters, I think, when you're designing in CAD is recreating the same thing over and over again, doing it manually. Even copy pasting is really slow. So using the pattern, which is an automated tool that allows you to edit the spacing and get rid of certain instances all within one feature is gonna save you a ton of time. Anytime that you're gonna have a design that repeats itself around, say, an axis in a circular fashion is gonna be the circular pattern. We'll first go up to Create and find Pattern. Choose Circular Pattern. Over in the dialog, we're gonna choose the type of pattern that you wanna perform. In our case, we're gonna start with Features and we'll explain the others in just a minute. The next thing that you're patterning is you can select from the timeline or you can select it in the model. It can be tricky in the model, admit. So I'm gonna choose down in the timeline. It has that hole and now we're gonna do the axis. The nice thing about the axis is there's a multiple ways that you can do this. If I were to look, I have a reference axis that actually runs right down the middle of this part, and that's great. I can also choose just about any round thing that is aligned with the right axis. So this one would work. Next, we're gonna go down to the quantity and choose how many we want. Then the distribution is talking about 360 degrees. So all the way around is full, and then we can do partial, which would let us go around only 180 in a certain direction. So now it's only going halfway around the circle. I'm gonna go back and choose full. We have the full distribution, and now we're gonna choose how many holes we want. I want five. So when it comes to the solution or compute type, I would always do optimized. You can sometimes use adjust when you need it, and I'll explain when in just a little bit. Great, it solves, and now we've got our circular pattern. Hey, be sure to check out my rectangular pattern video as well. That'll help you in learning how to use all these tools kind of together. One thing that I mentioned in that video is suppression, and that is the ability to come in and choose which instances that you may not want. So if I said, I want this distribution, except I don't want those two, Click OK and it solves. If you change your mind at any time, you can come back and just simply re-click or check on these and they'll come back in. Okay, next, you don't have to have everything built. You don't have to have just one feature. So in this case, I'd like to pattern this arm and its little tab as well. So I'll come to Circular Pattern by hitting the S key, typing in Circular, and then I'm gonna choose the features right here in the timeline. I wanna be sure to pick the extrude that is this tab, the extrude that is this arm, and the fillet that's on the tab. We'll pick the axis. Again, I can pick this axis that runs right in the center of the part, or I could even just select this outer face because it's got the right axis. It's gonna drop those in, and I can do as many instances as I want. And then I can also come up and suppress any that I don't want. Next, if you have a little body by itself and you want to pattern that, what you can do is come up to circular pattern. And instead of choosing all of the features at once, so this whole timeline is all the features that make up this body, I could choose to do the entire body. I'll select it and I'll do the axis as the center axis and I'll create multiples of these for me. This is gonna be the same with components in an assembly where you can just simply select the component and pattern it just like this. So you have all of these bodies and they are built off of this original. So if I change the fillet, I change anything about the way this was originally built, make that fill a little bigger, they're all gonna update, right? Because the pattern is driven off of this original seed instance. If you created a wedge of sorts that has this complexity, you could also use the same thing with circular pattern. I'll choose this entire body, the axis down on this vertical line right here, and then do as many pieces as I want till it's what you need for your design or it's complete. One thing to keep in mind is circular patterns are not just for circles. So I have a rib that I've solved right here where I've created a line and I've created this support and I want to pattern this around the box. I do wanna pattern it in a circle. It just happens to be solving in a rectangular box. And the cool thing about ribs is that they do kind of intelligently solve even when the geometry is changing. So 
let's do another circular pattern and choose the rib that we did. Now, the one gotcha is I don't have an axis in the middle. If you don't have anything, you can come up to construct and you can choose to create an axis. But when I look at what I have already, I do have a plane that runs through the middle. So what I'm gonna do is choose that plane and create a sketch. I can't see very well, so my plane is in the middle of this part over on the right in the sketch palette is slice. And this will let you cross section the plane that you're looking at. So now I can see the cross section and I can sketch my line. Sometimes it just makes the, you know, seeing things a little bit easier. So I'm going to sketch a line going up. This is the axis I'm going to pattern around. We'll finish the sketch. And now, now we can do the circular pattern we were trying to do. I like to pick it from the tree, or the timeline, excuse me. The axis is the center. And then I'm going to choose four of these. And even though it's shorter on this side and longer on the right, the rib knows to solve. So we'll click OK, and it still solves correctly, doesn't go through. Very cool. So you can use circular patterns in you know, designs that aren't necessarily circular. Hey, so I've created a series of cheat sheets and guides for assemblies, beginner tips, sketching, keyboard shortcuts. I continue to add to this. It is free. All you have to do is click the link below, and you'll join my email list as well. If you don't like emails, no problem. Just unsubscribe but check this out, it's free for the community. Now, one challenge I was bumping into on this plate, I wanted to pattern these in a cool circular way. And so the first thing I bumped into was when I tried to do all of it, I choose the object, which is this original hole and the patterned holes. I did a little rectangular, you know, a straight line pattern basically. And I now want to pattern around this cylinder this works to a degree. So when we start solving, you can see like there's too many in the middle and there's not enough um, for these outer holes. All right, well, how do we do? As soon as I pick the rectangular pattern, it's gonna pick all of them. It doesn't let me differentiate, but there is a way to do this. So let's try again. We'll come to create and we'll do circular pattern. I'm now gonna do faces. I'm gonna choose this face. And just a friendly reminder, if there was a filleted uh, rounded face here, you'd probably have to choose that fillet and the, you have to choose all the faces you care about effectively. So we'll choose this face, the axis that it patterns around. And I want to do as many as that will fit. So six looks good. Click OK. Right click. I'm going to repeat the pattern. Faces. This face. Axis is in the middle or center here. And then we're going to do more than six this time, I hope, because it should fit. That looks great. 14. Repeat. Choose the outer, the center, and we'll do, let's try 21. So that's one really cool thing about using faces with patterns. It gives you more distinction, more control. Let's talk about one last sort of complex part of patterns or circular patterns. Let's say that you were about to create a cutout. And this is an intelligent cut and in that it's not just going all the way through, but instead it's, you know, going a certain distance. I want to cut this out but I want to leave some space at the end. So I'm using the up to object, select the bottom face, and then we're going to leave three millimeters inside. So negative three, and so it backs off by three. Click OK. We have an intelligent cut that goes down and comes, comes back a little bit. As you can maybe guess, this would be problematic if we do a circular pattern and the pattern doesn't intelligently solve everything. So we're going to go to the feature and we'll choose that last cut and we're going to choose the axis. And now let's do, you know, eight of these. Do we want it to go all the way through? If we choose optimized, what does it do? It cuts those holes all the way through. That is not what I wanted. So it's up to you on certain solutions. My, my rule of thumb is try optimized. And then if it doesn't solve, the way you need it to, then try the alternative. So it doesn't give me what I want. So now I'm going to try adjust. Adjust is now going to calculate each one. What you might infer from that is it takes longer because it has to come in and do the cut, do three, three millimeters, do the cut, do three millimeters offset for each one. And then it gives us what we want, which is they're all slightly different 
If we were to maybe cut this in half, we use a section analysis right in the middle. You can see these two cuts are different, right, in their height, just like we wanted. All right, so that's circular patterns. I hope that helps. I'll see you guys tomorrow.